Today, we're going to make a built-in storage shelf. Hi, hello, I'm the Cyber Reef Guru. Thank you so much for watching. So in our bedroom closet area, we had some unused space above our laundry chute here. So the significant other decided, well, let's go ahead and use that space. So we built this lovely shelf unit that we inset into the wall. Today I'm gonna to walk you through how we built this shelving unit and hopefully you'll learn a little something and maybe build one for yourself. So if you like this type of content, please consider subscribing, ringing that bell, very important these days, and let's get on with the build. The project started by creating a hole in the wall where the inset would go. The carcass and the shelves of the unit are made out of 12 millimeter Baltic birch that we got from the local wood store. They come with these labels on it, which are really hard to get off. So Big Red is here spending a lot of time removing those labels to making sure we have a nice clean surface for our build. The next step of the build is to rip all of the lumber to the correct size, which we did on the table saw and using the cross cut sled. This is Big Red cutting all the holes for the pins for the shelves. She's using this Rockler jig, which I highly recommend. The next step in the process is to start assembling the carcass. We did this by putting a little bit of glue along the edge, pinning each corner to hold the side in place, and then running a row of brad nails across the side. Then we just cleaned up the glue squeeze out at the end. Next, we added the top and the bottom of the carcass by following the same process of putting a little bit of glue along the edge of the pieces. Then we used a clamp to add a little bit of extra pressure to the side to close the gap. And then we used the brad nailer once again to pin the sides in and make a permanent connection while the glue dries. With the shell of the carcass complete, we dry fit it into the hole to make sure everything fit properly. To secure the carcass to the wall, I drilled a couple pilot holes and then it occurred to me that I should check for level, which I did, and then I added the screws to secure it to the wall. It was right around this time when Big Red announced to me that she wanted some custom trim work around the outside of the carcass. So I went into the garage and started resawing some sapile that I had laying around to make some custom trim work. Took it to the planer to flatten it and then rounded each edge over using an eighth inch round over bit on the router table. Next step in the trim work process is to cut the trim to the appropriate length. So I measured the size of the opening for the carcass and then transferred those dimensions to the trim pieces using the miter saw so that I could get a nice 45 mitered corner. Took the trim work up to the carcass and then suddenly realized that apparently I don't know how to use a tape measure and no matter where I moved the wood I was clearly not in the right position. And no matter how much I measured the piece and the wood, it turns out it was still too short. So headed back down to the garage, started over and cut some new pieces out of mahogany. I pinned the bottom piece in and then aligned the two side pieces to make sure they were the appropriate length. Of course, at this point, I realized that it was actually too long on the sides. So I had to pry the right trim board off, <laughs> go down to the garage, trim the edges off, and then try again. Fortunately, this try was spot on. I put the two side pieces on here and then put the top in and everything fit perfectly. Nearing the end here, I sanded all of the trim work. Probably would have been better to do this before I attach it to the wall, but nevertheless, and I did some light sanding of the carcass inside as well, just to give it a nice smooth finish. This is a little bit of a glamour shot of the more or less finished carcass with the trim work. A little cleanup work here using the vacuum cleaner. And then I decided to put a coat of polyurethane on. So I'm just using regular polyurethane, but then wiping it on with a soft cloth rather than trying to pull out a paintbrush or one of those foam rollers. 
you can see that the addition of the polyurethane just really brings out the color of that mahogany and causes the wood grain in that Baltic birch plywood to really pop. I think the addition of the polyurethane really, really took this project to another notch. And so very happy with that decision. Well, that was the project. I hope you enjoyed it. Very easy to do, not a lot of materials. It's a great weekend project and provides a lot of extra space in the unused areas of your home. If you liked the video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up anyway, but leave your comments down below and we'll make future videos better. If you're not already following me on Instagram, please do so. That's where I post pictures of things like this that turn into future videos. All right, that's it. I appreciate you getting this far. Thank you so much. And don't forget to be inspired. Today, we're going to make a built-in storage unit. That was okay, right? Storage unit, storage, storage what? What are we going to call it? Where was I? Um, <clears throat> All right, if you like this type of... <clears throat> <clears throat> Hi, hello. I'm the Cyber Roof Guru. Thank you for watching. So today we are going to